أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم المتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن سار بسيره واهتدى بهديه إلى يوم الدين وبعد I want to repeat this one more time inshallah assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this ni'ma, ni'ma to Islam, the blessing, or the favor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored us with. And this is the ni'ma of being Muslims. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for having made it possible for us to congregate in this place having a better choice other than going to any other parts of the world, any other places, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us and we chose to come to come to this place. And we all know that the best places that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves so much, that he has talked about so many, many times, and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam emphasized the usefulness of these places is the masjid. And we all know, just to remind you and remind myself as well, our Prophet Muhammad wasallam, Our Prophet wasallam when he moved to Mac from Makkah to Medina, the first place, the first house, other than looking at establishing his own house, he thought of establishing a masjid. Just to show us how important this place is. And we all remember that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu says, مَجْتَمَعَ قَوْمٌ فِي بَيْتٍ مِنْ بُيُوتِ اللَّهِ It will never be a situation that brings together people and they go, they all get gathered in one of the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala illa except that حَفَّتْهُمْ نَزَلَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّكِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends down to them Tranquility. And the angels build some barriers against any heart for them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that group of people that is in the masjid before the creations that are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we are blessed in one situation first and foremost that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen this place for us to be our place where we are found at this moment and it's one of those moments, those places where our names are mentioned before the creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our gathering be in subhanahu wa ta'ala ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Make my tongue to soften it so I can speak to you, be it in subhanahu wa ta'ala, remind you of what you know, but also to penetrate, uh, go into your heart so you can go with something before we leave this place, be it in Allah, and put it in practice, be it in subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our topic is about employing the God-given talent 
to serving humanity. Using the God-given talent to serve in our societies where we are. We all know brothers and sisters that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed so many of us, elevated them, and others are below. Others are in between. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose that to be because of what He knows that is good for all humanity. I'm going to go direct to a verse that relates to this and try to navigate through that verse, inshallah, see how best we can take some lessons out of this. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بَعْدَ عَمَدْ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَابْتَغِ فِي مَا آتَاكَ اللَّهُ دَارَ الْآخِرَةِ وَابْتَغِ فِي مَا آتَاكَ اللَّهُ دَارَ الْآخِرَةِ That take advantage of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you and employ it to benefit you in the hereafter. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us is abundant. It's uncountable. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has just has chosen you to possess what he has given you in terms of skills for a reason best known by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by choosing that and giving it to you in particular, it is purposely to test you and to test me. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us is in our service, but at the same time it's there to test us, to see whether are we, we are going to be grateful to that favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or we are not going to be grateful. In other words, if you are not grateful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has so mentioned in so many verses, لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ If you show gratitude towards what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, expect some increase from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَبْتَلْ فِي مَا أَتَاكَ اللَّهُ دَارَ الْآخِرَةِ Choose out of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, and try to cultivate the Akhirah. وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا And never forget your portion in this dunya. In Tafsir, when they're explaining this verse, وَلَا تَنْسَ that particular statement, وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا The Mufassirun are saying that don't forget to utilize the life that you are having today and the skills that you are having today to put them into usefulness so that they can benefit you tomorrow. And not go all over the world displaying facade. In other words, business of doing facade all over the world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbids for the forbid that. Inna Allah la yuhibbu al mufsidin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want, does not like those people who are wrongdoers, people who are committing bad acts. Let me go back again up in the beginning of the creation of mankind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala presents this idea to the angels and says, Inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that I'm going to place in this dunya my servant. I'm going to place in this dunya my ambassador. Let's put it that way. I'm going to place in this dunya a good servant of mine. 
The angels upon receiving this message, they say, Ataja'u fiha, man yufsidu fiha, wa yasfiku dima. Allah, are you going to place in this dunya someone that is going to do, to do evil in this dunya? Ataja'u fiha, man yufsidu fiha, someone that is going to do evil in this dunya. Wa yufsiku dima and spill blood all over the world and we are always praising you we gave you all that you demanded from us in terms of respect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds to the angels by saying I know more than what you know and I know that which you don't know. In the following verse, verses I should say, وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired Adam, taught him names of every creation. كُلَّهَا جَمِيعُهَا أو جَمِيعَهَا every name of everything that we find in this dunya those that were fallen in place before we came into existence and those that are yet to come Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Adam and when Adam lived, left this dunya some of them are just coming into presence today coming into our picture today when Adam left miles, I mean many I and mean thousands and thousands of years ago Things that are in use today, that we are employing today, whose names were taught by, taught by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, teaching Nabiullah Adam, are things like this. The microphone, never was it heard and seen during the time of Adam alayhi salam. The computer that we're using today, that name was known by Adam, but it was not applicable during his time, it's applicable during our time. Now he taught him all these names after taught, teaching him and then he came to the angels. He displayed all the creations that he created and said in kuntum swadiqin. He talks to the angels telling them as a challenge Give me the names of such creations if you are always, if you think you are truthful about your statement that I'm going to place in the dunya someone is going to do evil in the world. All angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, La subhanahu, you are exalted, O oh Lord. La ilma lana illa ma allamtana. There is no knowledge that you shall possess except what you have taught us. Innaka anta al-alim al-hakim. Indeed, you are the all knowledgeable and you are the all, the all wise. In this particular verse, brothers and sisters, we are looking, what I'm interested in here is the skill that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Adam. And Adam Time came when he said, Tell the angels the names of all these creations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in many of the, the, the verse, when Adam alayhi salam explained and gave names of every creation, angels at this point believed that what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them in the beginning was right. The key word here is the skill, the knowledge that Adam received. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired him. He uses the statement taught him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring that picture to all of us here today. Every single one of us, Allah has blessed him with something. Either you are knowledgeable in computer, either you are knowledgeable, you are a doctor somewhere, either you are an engineer somewhere, either you are a mechanic, 
or you are a specialist in anything. And your skill is required today. Your skill can be employed properly and we get a full reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now how can we do that? First and foremost, go back to that particular verses where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduces the aspect of knowledge to the angels. And when the angels respond by saying, we don't know except what you have told me, told us, and also appreciate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me something, which something I should start putting into business, into usefulness. These skills, we use the word, the brother used the word talent, and that's the topic, the God-given talent. I started by explaining what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَعَلَّمَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught, which means an inspiration from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Adam alayhi salam. This inspiration and the kind of knowledge that we acquire when we go to schools to Allah or in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the skills or are the talents that we are referring to in this position. Allow me brothers and sisters to use these two words, God-given talent, like what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Adam, of course, it's a talent that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Adam which angels did not possess. And also the talent that you go to school or the skills that you go to school for are all having a source from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now if they have a source from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how do we put them into proper use? Number one, by doing what we did today. <coughs> What we did today is to come to the master. And that understanding that between this and that I have to go to the masjid, that is the skill that so many people don't have. That is the differentiation, I mean, the, the difference that you have between you and someone else who chose to do or to, go to, to do something else other than coming to the masjid. That is what has brought you here to learn something, inshallah, or to be reminded, actually, I should repeat this statement, what I'm sharing with you is not something new to you, but we're just sharing it together. I'm just reminding you of, what's, of something that you know. To be reminded of what we have in terms of skills, so we can go out and look for the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, employing these very skills. I want to emphasize this point, brothers and sisters, that a talent or the skill that you have, you don't have to be a doctor. We don't have to be doctors or professors or PhD holders or engineers to make anything that we have today useful in our life, to make anything that we have today useful to our communities but also useful to us when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now is the time, brothers and sisters, for us to think and ponder and examine, go, think about it yourself. Examine yourself. Do a self-evaluation and say, what do I have extra that some people don't have? What do I have in terms of opportunities today, extra, that some people don't have? Let's throw that some vivid examples. Today we have a situation in Syria. It is alarming. People are dying every single day. Today we have a situation in the U.S. Alarming. Muslims are in a scary situation, fear. 
Today we have a situation in Burma, Myanmar, alarming. There is a certain skill that is required there. There is a certain skill that is required here. There is a certain skill that is required in Syria. Just draw these three, used to this, I mean, just to use these three examples. In Syria, the skill that is required there today, Use what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you to cultivate your way to entering the jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me put it out. What is required in Syria today is Rajulun Swalikun. Just like Lut alayhi salam. When he was encroached, approached by those angels, those shayateen, those people who came who wanted to befriend angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or men other than women, Lut alayhi salam said, Alaysa fikum rajulun rashidun. Is there no one that is a straight person amongst you who, whose brain is understanding right now that can find a difference between a woman and a woman? Today, the situation in Syria requires someone who can stand up and say, Brothers, you are Muslims. It takes the skills, it takes the determination, it takes the commitment, it takes the power, a power. The power today, I'm repeating it many, many times, is a skill today. Some people don't have it. It's a talent today. Some people don't have it, and those who have it today do not employ it properly. To remind them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it's not allowed to kill each other as Muslims. Muslim society, Muslim community, why do you have to kill each other? Ultimately, it's going to be worldly issues. Put aside Syria today. Come to the US. What is required today for us to counteract the social media today or the big, the CNN and everything and whatever they display is a skill. Which skill is the knowledge of what's going on in the world? Which skill is the ability to speak the same language as the media people speak and say, this is not us? Ours is this one. Today we have some people who are interpreting for us the Quran who have no knowledge about the Quran. When actually we have the older man, Shio, ah, those who are knowledgeable but they cannot stand today to speak or speak in defense of Islam. <clears throat> so there is a skill that is required today. My invitation, my call, or my appeal is to all of those people who have the ability to go to school, to go seek knowledge, acquire the skills required today to be able to talk the language that the media is speaking today to man, to mess up Islam. Some are not a representation, true representation, and most of it is not a true representation of what Islam is. But you have no one to speak for that. We have no ability to have no skills. So we need someone to go study journalism, be part of that, inshallah, and be able to speak the same language as people speak today, so people can go, go and not go always against Islam, but sometimes embrace what Islam is in terms of values. Let's move a little bit to Obama today, Myanmar. In Myanmar today, there is a skill required. Many of you may have heard of this. A person that is living today without a doctor. Today the President, President Obama, and the health care issue as one of his greatest that is taken today 
is a battlefield. People are saying we are taking it, others are saying we are not taking it. It's beneficial. Someone is saying I don't have a doctor today because I don't have a doctor I'm against the system that's in place today. Imagine if you have a doctor and have a ratio of 15 probably, I don't know the number of the ratio. Each one of us, each doctor is having a, couple, I mean a, big, a, a given number of people that is attending to today in the US. In Burma, there is no single doctor that is attending to the Rohingya community that are suffering today, who are our brothers, Muslims. That skill of doctors is required in that part of the world. In Burma today, kids don't go to school. They have not that right. A teacher's skill is required in that part of the world today. In Burma today, they need to reorganize and reassemble, assemble themselves, put themselves in one spot so they can have one voice. That skill of people who can organize people, put them together so you can have a single voice, so they can talk for themselves, is missing in the Rohingya community today. Now, the biggest question is, I have a skill today. It's a personal evaluation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Hasibu anfusakum qabla an tuhasabu. Do a self-evaluation before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings you into account. Now, check yourself, brothers and sisters. Do I have the required skill to serve somewhere? Is it in my community? The answer is always going to be yes. Today, this message requires some skillful individuals. Someone who can help us do everything that is required to make this place a comfortable place as we find it today. Someone who can volunteer that I'm going to leave you one day and do this job and let you go take a rest. The brothers that I'm seeing here always are the same figures that I find in this place. And these are the very brothers that you find in this place and sisters. So, are they possessing a special skill that enables them to come and do this? Or do you also have it and you can do the same thing and get the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Let me draw this example to you, brothers. Using the verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa fi dhalika faliyatana fasil mutana fisum. And for that, those who want to compete must compete. For that, those who are ready to compete must compete. Umar and Abu Bakr both of them competing to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abu Bakr as Amir al Mu'mineen the commander of the believers. In his position, in his capacity, with all the powers and the security that he should have, is seeking to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As a routine, he has to know where residents, where people of his ummah, of the ummah, of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where their addresses are. And he knows every single one by street and name. He's looking to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He goes to one of the houses, finds a, a lady that is so old, incapable, and skillful, has nothing to do to help him herself. And Abu Bakr says, This is where I'm going to look for the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Saying, Wabdal Fima Atak Allahu Adar Al Akhira. Press, use what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, the life in the hereafter. 
He goes deep in the night to provide services to this, this lady who cannot serve herself. Does his job and goes home. Umar comes. Looking for the same thing he wants to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's looking for the reward that is abundant in his locality. He says, if I'm here as one of the bosses, I have to know each and every person's address and I'm going to go visit them, inshallah, and I'm going to provide a service to them. He lands in this very house where Abu Bakr landed. He comes in, checks the house, talks to the lady, how are you doing, who did this? I wanted to do some service for you. The lady says, someone did the services already. Umar says, yeah, who is that person that has done this job? The following day, he says, I'm gonna try. Will I try, can I try, madam? The lady says, Tafadhan, you can do it. Can you tell me the person that was here yesterday who did this job? I am blind and I'm incapable of recognizing any single person. I don't know who came here, but someone came and did the job. Umar goes, comes the, the following day. If he came the first day around 3 o'clock in the night, the following day he comes back around 2 o'clock in the night. He comes, knocks at the door. Of course, the door is not opening. He enters the building and the business is already taken care of. Umar gets puzzled. Umar gets puzzled. Says, what, I, what can I do? I really need this. I really need to get some reward. This is a person from whom I can get rewarded. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward me abundantly for just doing this small job. The following day he comes earlier. He again finds the job well done and no one knows exactly who did it. And between Umar and Al and Bakr, they are meeting, but no one knows exactly what the other one does at what particular at point A or at time B. Finally, Omar says, if it requires me to sleep here all night, I'm gonna do this. But I'm gonna cut. I wanna see this person who's always coming before me. He comes, he takes himself a position, for it's a position where he hides himself. They say behind a rock and then waits to see who is this person. Eventually the man comes, gets into the building, prepares everything, and there he goes. And then Omar the Lam says, I want to trust this guy and see who exactly he is. Is that during the night in the night? He comes close to him and says, Hello, hello, hello. Man enter. And who are you asking? Both of them facing at each other. Omar looks at Al-Bakr and says, Enter? Enter? Is it you? Is it you, Amir Mu'minin, that is taking all the rewards that I'm looking for? I've been here for the last four nights. I was stressing this. But he took it from me. Omar says in his own words, I wanted to compete. From this day, I knew that I will never compete with Abu Bakr. The first time I get was in a competition with him it was when the Prophet Muhammad <coughs> required some finances to support this cause. Umar I came with half of my position. I thought I was the best. Imagine Umar who came with everything. And when he was asked, what did you leave behind? He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's on Allah. He is sufficient. Umar in his own words says, I will never compete with Abu Bakr. Such are individuals that are supposed to emulate. 
Imagine the competition for a good cause. I want to do something tomorrow. I want to come to this mosque. Let me give this very example. I want to find everything done. I don't want this guy that is always here, that is always doing this. If I find this mosque open, I'm going to go on my toys, do it, and let no one see me. And then tomorrow, inshallah, I'll do the same thing. We are competing in other things. The talents that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, we employ them to buy celebrities, to become celebrities. No, there is no celebrity before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The celebrity before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that person that worked during his lifetime, employing the powers and the skills that he had or she had to benefit that person in the earth. Two things before I come with brothers and sisters. In Surah Al-An'am, verse 165, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Huwa al It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who made you khulafa, assistants, representatives in this dunya. وَرَفَعَ بَعْضَكُمْ فَوْقَ بَعْضٍ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevated some of you above the earth. How the rajat in terms of levels someone is above the earth. But the reason why he did that, he placed us in this dunya blow to test you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevated us in terms of status, in terms of skills, in terms of financial status, everything so Allah can test us. <coughs> so He can test you using the very good things that He gave you. Inna rabbaka sari'u al-iqab wa inna la ghafur rahim Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so quick when it comes to when it comes to punishment and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful So the key point here is please don't relax if you have a skill Do not wait for someone to wake you up think about it be creative think of something that you can do today because you're having it today, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just testing it with you. Testing you with it. And finally, this is something that we always want to remind ourselves about. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Take advantage of five things before the other five come. Take a five advantage of five things before these ones come. In the nutshell, if I don't take advantage of these ones before these ones come, I'm gonna be in khasar, total loss. Number one thing, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam chose the youth. Shababuka qabla harik. Take advantage of your youth time before you become old. Wallahi, I am sure that many of us who are of my age, I am 50 by the way, alhamdulillah. Those who are close to my age, my brother could be the one that is, and my brother the other, no, the one that I believe that are a little bit older than me. But I'm regretting something that I did not do at age 30. 
So I should have taken advantage of that age, using everything or doing everything that I was capable of doing before I become 50 because now I cannot do much of what I was capable of doing when I was tired. Shabab uka kopna armik. You use time before you grow old. Number two. Suhatuka kabla marabik. You could have before you go sick, brothers. Last Jumu'ah I was here, and they say, La qadr Allah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from these chronic diseases. If a bad, a chronic disease catches you, Allah will say, Ya Rabbi, can you change this for me? Ya Rabbi, help me go out of this. Ya Rabbi, don't test me with this. Ya Rabbi, I wish I had the energy and the powers to execute ABCD I should have. Now I don't have it. So take advantage of your good life. You are healthy today. To use it, employ it. You can walk in snow during the cold. Come to Masjid around 5 a.m., 5 a.m., 5 a.m. when you are doing Shalat and Fajr, do it right now because you are still healthy. Someone that is sick, Allah he cannot do it. Cannot stand up, cannot walk, cannot stand the cold. So you have to go to Number three. Take advantage of your wealth before you go poor. And that is coming. Innama al usri yusra. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it easy, means balancing. Whenever there is hardship, there is ease. And whenever there is ease, do not expect it to be permanently there. There is hardship coming. So take advantage of your wealth today before you go poor. When someone will ask for a ten for ten dollars and say, Laitani malak to her. I wish I had the ten dollars, I should have given it away. Number four, take advantage of your life before you die. Skip it. Think one thing is missing again. Who's the brother that can remind me this? Because Taking advantage of your life before you die is the last one. So the first one, take advantage of your youth before you go old. Number two, take advantage of your good health before you go sick. Number three, take advantage of your youth before, I mean, take advantage of your wealth before you go poor. Who can remind us? Number four. That's number five. The last one. Faraqa qabla shulik. Barakallahu feekum. Wallahi, this gathering that we are in today, brothers, reminds me of our work in Faraq, our time, our free time. We may take it as our free time, but this is our business time. We are not here to pass time, brothers. You are not here to pass time. You are here for a purpose. You are here to learn, to share something, to be reminded of something, to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to read the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to go remind someone of what is beneficial to that particular human being, and to change the context, change the perspective, the negativity that is placed up against the Muslims today, to make it positive. Your free time before you become busy. Well, like time will come when they make you so busy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you so busy. And you say, I wish I had time. I should have gone to this. Now is the time, brothers and sisters. Now is the time to remember those brothers. 
that are in Syria today and other parts of the world, the brothers that are in Burma today and other parts of the world, the brothers the Muslims who need someone who can go to school and study journalism today, strategically we can get Benilina and kill this pressure that Muslims are experiencing today. If you are free, take advantage of this free time, go occupy yourself, get that skill inshallah, so you can benefit the Ummah. And finally, Hayatu Aqabla Mawdik. Take advantage of your life before you die. When we die, we all know in Surah Al Jum'ah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if someone is approaching the Qala Rabbi Lawla Akhartani ila ajal Khalil. When day comes, you say, Oh Allah, Lawla Akhartani ila ajal Khalil. I'm just asking for a little time. And that time I'm telling you what I'm going to do with this. Imagine now we're telling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for aswaddaq. I'm going to give charity, to do charity. And I want to expound this by saying, I'll be do volunteering for a sadaq. I'll volunteer to do good for humanity. Again, emphasize volunteerism. Again, I'll be a good doer in this dunya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never give you any rest. When time has come, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more acquainted with what we do on a daily basis. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, our theme, our topic was just a rotation or a navigation or exploration of the talent that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us and putting it into proper use. Using the God-given talent to save humanity. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us put us among those people who have listened to this, these reminders and picked something out of it that we are going to work on inshallah. اللهم اجعلنا ممن يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنا اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم اجعل اجعل أول هذه الليلة صلاحا وأوسطها فلا وأوسطها فلاحا وآخرها نجاحا اللهم واسمعنا فيها ما يسر نفوسنا يا رب العالمين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم ربنا اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين أمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف الرحيم اللهم انصر المسلمين في مشارق الأرض ومغاربها يا رب العالمين اللهم انصرهم جميعا اللهم انصرهم جميعا اللهم انصرهم جميعا اللهم وفقهم جميعا إلى ما تحبه وترضاه يا رب العالمين اللهم اجعل جمعنا هذا جمعا مرحوما وتفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تدع فينا ولا منا شقيا ولا محروما سبحانك اللهم بحملك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك والحمد لله رب العالمين Brother Azul Mutayn We thank you for attending this halaqa and I thank you again for your time and I urge you to do something inshallah um, one little announcement um, I happen to be working with Burma um, Task Force USA and I'm looking for volunteers inshallah um, volunteerism means here yeah, our job now is the awareness so many people heard about Burma, the Rohingya community, but no one knows exactly what's happening place. I mean, what's, what's taking place there. If we know what is taking place there, no one does anything. But the most important thing is 
we need to be aware of what's going on today in that part of the world. Muslims are suffering, and they are brothers, they are our sisters, they are our kids. We really need to see them triumphing. We really need to see them going to school. We, need, we really need to see them uh, self-helping, inshallah. It requires our effort as well, our help in terms of skills, our help in terms of ideas, our hubs, our hubs in terms of activism, inshallah, to help them do okay, uh, but will be lost, inshallah, in terms of citizenship, in terms of dignity, in terms of good health, in terms of education, everything that they have missed today, they have lost today, that many of us are enjoying with in subhanahu wa ta'ala. And by that, I welcome some comments, inshallah, welcome some questions, if there's any that I can take, inshallah, more than able, I'll do that being in subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any comments, any questions, inshallah? Any ideas? I need some volunteers. Anyone that is ready to volunteer, inshallah, I conduct you many times as I can, inshallah, to volunteer to help us, inshallah, with the Rohingya community, inshallah. The Rohingya community, for your information, um, Bama is a strategic part of the world today that Europe is looking for um, because of the services that are supposed to be extended to them you know there is no service for free there is always a string attached but because of those services today it became a strategic area everyone is interested in it our president here visited it in the last two years two times the last time he was here was there was in November he mentioned the word Rohingya Rohingya is not even, they don't even include it on their map. There is no such a community like, like the Rohingya community. They call them immigrants from Bangladesh, so they have no place. They are not, not recognized, they are second class citizens. So the president talked about one thing, please give them peace. Please grant them what they need in terms of what every human being, human being needs. So our job is to bring this awareness the support, inshallah, the pressure that we can press on them politically, through the president, through our representatives, inshallah, they probably will come, with a sec come up with a second thought, inshallah, and accept these people as true human beings. And if you need more information about that, inshallah, more than happy to share, inshallah, if you could not. Anyone that's ready to volunteer, inshallah, I'll contact you, inshallah. Can you give us specific ways in which we need to volunteer? Not general, but like... Okay, specific ways, number one. Um, Imam Mujahid, Malik Mujahid, is the head of this department. Actually, I should have mentioned this before. He's the head of Justice for All. Now, being the head, Justice for All is working on two projects right now. One of them is Burma, Myanmar, or the Rohingya community in Burma, Myanmar. And the second one is in the Central Republican, the African Republic. Now, my task is on the Rohingya community in Burma. What do I do? We need volunteers whenever we have any alerts to have a communication with these volunteers, inshallah, so we can reach out to the biggest community, be it in Allah, to sort of bring their awareness, the adaptment, what's happening on a daily basis, so that people can know what's taking place on a daily basis without knowing what's going on every single day in terms of suffering. You cannot say this, I mean, you cannot step, step up for help. So we need to equip people with information. That's number one. Someone who can help us search with that information. Number two, we need to call our representatives, like the senator here, like the, the, the how, I mean, House of Representatives. Um, they had two bills today in the Senate of Dubai. There are two representatives, the two bills today in the Senate and the House. 
One of them was passed in the house, but there's one that's still hanging in the Senate. So what they're trying to do is if we call them our representatives, they revive these bills, they forward it, they pass them, then they have to send some ambassadors or representatives from here to go do the negotiation for these people to gain back their citizenship. That's one way of helping. Of course, the element of finance is not forgotten. <coughs> but at this point, I don't want to talk much about finance. If I gave you a chance, I'm going to leave this, I mean, some brochures here, inshallah, uh, uh, for more information, inshallah. Just in case you need to volunteer in terms of, do anything in terms of finance, then I mean, it has some directions as to exactly you can conduct in terms of finance. So my job, or the person that I'm looking for, the people that I'm looking for, is to share this information. Can I ask a follow-up question? Sure. Um, so I think some of the brothers would probably volunteer if they knew also how long of their time. Nobody's asking for money here. Mom is not asking for money. Right. Sometimes we, we cringe because there's so many causes to we, we want to contribute to, we don't have the money for it. Sometimes we can't even survive on our own. So we understand that. Right. But if you can give us a, an idea of, okay, you need to spend an hour a week, I'm sure some of these brothers can put their hand up. Well, Lahi, every moment, every moment is useful. Like, for instance, if you have a halata here, every Saturday we have a halata. And someone stands up for one minute, says, Salaamu Alaikum. Please don't forget, there are some brochures, brochures there. If you can pick them, please read them and do something. Because these brochures give a big amount of I mean, information. They provide huge information than what I can take explaining everything. So that's just a minute, for instance, yeah. and it's done. Wallahi, there's that, that little, just a little thing that we can do to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't have to have that intention to do it in that. No one has time to occupy himself or herself 24-7 something that is not <laughs> counterproductive in terms of finances sometimes. We don't have that much time. But you can do only that, inshallah. And someone will say, I'm going to pass it to another masjid, inshallah. That's another thing. If you get in touch, inshallah, I will find one thing. I'll guarantee you one thing that I'm going to find what you can do within your time. Be it in time or time. Anyone is ready, shall we? I will. Barakallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and bless all of us, inshallah. And then we'll take it from there. Uh, it's better than nothing and I'm strong, inshallah. I'll give the details, be it in Allah, and we'll take it from there, be it in I'm sure, Imam, there are others who want to volunteer, but they want to, oh, they want to talk yeah, personally and get more, information. get more information. But I, I'll volunteer to make sure that we announce yeah. the... Barakallah Afiqum. So Barakallah Afiqum. That's great. Yeah, Barakallah Afiqum. Give you all the details, inshallah. Leave the, the brochures here, inshallah. And uh, please commit to... Again, when we take these brochures, brothers, invite them in. Advise the brothers and sisters not to take them and throw them away. At least read them. Someone may, may just be doing that. Brother, read it, brother. Read it. Just read it. Take a minute and read it. And that's it, of course. Let's not take too much of our, our brother's time, inshallah. Thank you very much one more time. Thank you, the organizers and uh, the hosts and youth masjid. Barakallah, we are always um, doing what we need, inshallah. Barakallah, we for facilitating this place. It's very much conducive and very much welcoming. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless, bless you and bring you abundantly. And the brothers as well and sisters, thank you for coming and listening. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for your time and reward you for your effort. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Nashad an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfuruka atubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.